Anthony here from Time Lapse, and today we got something a little bit different for you guys. We just uh, finished recording the podcast a little bit earlier today, and we thought we'd try our hand at some video content uh, while we were still on a little bit of a roll. Something really simple to put together today, uh, I have a little unboxing of the Ming 1701. The Ming, uh, or the Ming watch that we talk about all the time on the podcast, of course. Uh, we, we are really fans of the brand, really enjoy uh, their, their message and what they're trying to do. I was lucky enough to grab one of the 1701s when they went on sale. Only 300 of them were released, 150 in black, 150 in blue. I got my hands on a black anthracite dial. That was about a year ago. So I had a year to really uh, embrace this piece and fit it into my collection and, and try it out. And I gotta say, I'm really, really happy with the results. It is a fantastic watch, especially at the price point. But before we get into the watch itself, I'm gonna give you a little bit of rundown of how I found out about it. This was the first micro brand watch that I purchased, uh, and I have not been let down at all. So, um, way back, I guess it was about a year ago, September of 2017, I was just, you know, on Hodinkee, and uh, I came across a video, let's talk watches, or week roundup, week in review, one of those, uh, something like that and they had a panel of their editors just speaking about their favorite watches of the year and jack forrester actually had on a ming 1701 and thank god that they had it in the thumbnail of the video because i typically don't watch those like those panel videos uh but they had this this watch in the thumbnail and i was instantly drawn to it and lucky enough for me he spoke about uh, Ming the brand, uh, Ming Thien, the, the man who was behind the brand as well, and the team of designers and, and, and watch enthusiasts that came together to help produce this piece. The story of the piece struck a chord with me almost as much as the aesthetics of it did. Of course, I, I really do like minimalist design and I really do uh, appreciate a, a story like that when I can attach it to a micro brand. But that wasn't the selling point. The selling point was about a thousand dollars or under a thousand dollars US. I was really ready to buy a watch uh, in and around that price point and especially I wanted to buy one with a story. Up until that point I, I already had a Hamilton automatic and a Tissot uh, so I, I really wanted to get something a little bit different something that not everybody had. So I was really happy to find uh, out more about this watch and everything I learned about it, learned about the brand and the piece made me want to buy it even more. Of course, it uses Swiss Salita uh, manually wound movement, case made out of titanium, like all the things that check off great boxes. Uh, and I'll go more into that once I unbox it. Um, but I'll, I do want to share the story about how I got it. Ming at that time was riding a huge high because Hodinkee publicized information about it, released an article, and also released a date and time when you could purchase the watch. Ming was releasing them in batches of 50. Uh, to be pre-ordered. And I had already missed the first two uh, batches at that point. So I knew I only had, I had a small window to get the remaining few and I knew I wanted black. Uh, I had a meeting that day at Honda Canada and I knew I wouldn't be able to just go and order this right at 9.30 or maybe it was nine o'clock, I can't remember exactly. Um, so I actually brought my laptop in my car and asked to be excused at around 8.45. Ran out to my car, hooked my laptop up to my phone's uh, data and just kept refreshing the page. Thank God I did do that because at around 10, 9, sorry, 8.55, uh, it allowed me to hit purchase. Right when I did that, I was ecstatic. I was so excited. And then of course I went back to my meeting and forgot all about it. This came in the mail a couple of days later it, in less than a week. So shout out to Ming for very quick delivery. And yeah, this little wooden box that you're seeing in front of me uh, arrived at my doorstep. The other reason why I wanted to do this is because these were limited production watches. If you did want, if you do still want to get a Ming 1701, you're going to have to buy it on the second hand market. You're going to have to buy it used. I've already seen a few uh, on the, for sale on Watch Recon and other websites like that, selling for like 1500 US. Pretty cool. Uh, knowing that I got in at obviously a bargain uh, and knowing that they're selling for more now. So this video is also going to double for those people who are interested in buying the piece, missed out on their chance originally, and now have to buy it used. You want to make sure it comes with everything that came in this box originally because it really makes you feel better about the person who owned it before you. We open up this wooden box. If you look at the box itself, it's pretty standard. A lot of micro brands are doing the wooden box thing now, uh, but Ming, I think, was a little bit ahead of that curve. On the face of it, you have the Ming logo uh, sort of etched in, like laser cut, 
And then on the front, you have a little button to depress. Press that, lift, releases this pin here. The Ming logo, again, laser etched on the inside. The box itself is really well made. Um, solid, good weight to it, and it's got these nice chrome finishings up here. My Omega box has similar chrome buckles, so I think that, that must stand for quality. Uh, really, really nice, though, that they, that they included that and didn't just put a regular cheap hinge because it makes you feel like you're opening something more substantial. The watch came with this letter, it's a starting Dear Connoisseur, which again, makes you feel fantastic when you open it up. It's on a really thick paper. It, it, it's something that, the little things you appreciate, and uh, that's why I kind of like the whole micro brand thing. Um, but it just basically talks about how to care for the watch and congratulates you on your purchase, and basically how to get in touch with, uh, with the company and everything. And then at the bottom, really nice signature, uh, Ming Thien founder and it looks like it's in pen so he actually took the time to sign 300 of these pretty cool if you're buying it uh, used if it doesn't have this kind of a shame if the previous owner threw that away because I think that really uh, helps helps you fall in love with the story of the watch uh, once you get that out of the way you will see a felt pack and this is how I opened mine Got a felt pack, again, has Ming engraved on the front. You flip it over one more time and realize it's a it's a travel pa uh, pouch for watches. It's a, it's a single watch travel pouch. And out comes the Ming 1701. Now, when I received mine, it was vacuum packed, which was pretty cool. I, uh, I thought that was a pretty cool thing to do. It definitely speaks to like quality if you have to, if you pull your watch out and it's like in a vacuum pa uh, packed package. I thought that was uh, really cool. Um, and yeah, just analyzing the piece itself, of course, made of grade five titanium. It says that on the back. It also says the model number, 1701. Gives you the, uh, the serial number, because obviously 150 in each dial. Adjusted to five positions, uh, which just means that the watch, the Slita movement was actually adjusted um, by Ming in-house uh, to five positions so that it's, it can keep time and is regulated if it's face down, face up, crown down, crown up, that's all that really means. Something that's not a huge deal, but definitely uh, something that a lot of watches in this price range do not come with. So that's, uh, I thought that was pretty cool as well. It definitely speaks to the value proposition aspect of the watch. You can see that the titanium uh, that they worked with, they worked with it really, really well. Uh, there's a high polish on the bezel on the outside of, uh, on the, sorry, on the, on the front of the watch. On the back, it's a really nice brushed uh, titanium. Same thing on the edge. You have these curved lugs. Really, really interesting design, considering that this is a this is their first watch, right? Like if you look at my Omega, there is a whole lot of case design stuff going on, uh, but that's a watch that has been reworked and has had teams of individuals uh, doing it. Ming has gone about their own way, making a really, really interesting design on the case itself and still remaining minimalist, which is what drew me to the watch in the first place. Um, other than that, you can see on the on the dial, there is that anthracite color and there's like a 3D print of this spiraling carbon. That's what that's what I've sort of seen it as like a spiraling carbon fiber really, really draws your eye to it in, in and it looks different in almost every light. Something that Jack Forrester uh, remarked, I, I think he remarked uh, in that original video, is that there's sort of a different look to this watch in every light. I'm just gonna give it a wipe down here. I mean, aesthetically, the watch is fantastic. Now, what, uh, each Ming came with three straps. So in the box here, I have the other two. Came with a navy blue strap and a burgundy strap. And of course, the tan strap that I have on the watch right here. Each strap comes with a little uh, depressant on the spring bar, which allows you to switch out the straps immediately. And again, something a lot of these newer brands are doing. Um, I think it's a great idea because it allows you to customize your watch on the fly. And there's times when you're gonna wake up in the morning, want to put a different band on, but you can't. I have that problem with my SKX all the time. I want to put the bracelet on one day and switch out the NATO, but I don't have five to 10 minutes in the morning to very carefully pick out those spring bars. So to have these little depressors here on, on the spring bar, it makes it a really, really easy thing to do. And I throw this on the, I throw these ones on the Tissot and the Ming interchangeably. Uh, in fact, Ming actually sells strap packs now, so you can buy different straps, uh, distressed leather, which I 
own, and then uh, they have a couple of other ones now, I think, uh, more supple leather. Uh, they also have another line that they've made with Jean Rousseau in Paris, uh, and it's pretty cool, all the different choices that they have. The last thing that you'll find in the box is, of course, the warranty card. Let me grab this up here. The warranty card is made out of aluminum, it feels like. Really, really nice brushed aluminum with this like laser etch. Of course, in the same design as the Ming 1701 dial. Really cool. Um, has the date and the serial number on it. Mine, October 1st, 2017. So this is actually... It'll be a year old in a couple of days, which is awesome. Um, I've had zero problems. This watch has been perfect uh, since I got it. No issues with quality. It feels solid. It was my first manually wound watch, and I kind of judge all my other manually wound watches uh, to this one because it's so crisp. And it's so nice to turn. Um, great piece, really, for, for the money. Couldn't have gone better. And if you like this look, I mean, there's not really anything like it. A couple months ago, I had to go get my Seiko SKX fixed and I was waiting. I actually spoke about this on the podcast. I was waiting um, just for, for the, the guy to take a look at it. And a couple of other young guys walked in, one with a vintage Omega, another one with a Breitling. And while we were waiting, we were just obviously talking about watches. They noticed the Ming on my wrist and they knew they had seen it somewhere before, but they couldn't place where. Uh, so I told them, well, you probably have seen it on Hodinkee. Uh, they were just uh, surprised that, you know, it was there were only 300 of them, and they really, really enjoyed the story behind it as well. So it's kind of cool um, to be the one to show them a piece that they probably wouldn't have seen uh, in their lifetime otherwise, given the fact that only 300 of these exist. All in all, great piece. Really, really happy with it. If you are thinking about buying one on the used market, definitely make sure it comes with uh, the warranty card, the pouch, the straps. If it doesn't, I mean, I'm sure it was still well taken care of, but it's kind of nice to have the whole package, especially something uh, that I think is as meaningful as the first piece from a great micro brand. I really hope that uh, we see more from this brand, especially at this price point. Right now, the Ming 1703, the GMT model, and the 1901 are, well, the 1703 is still reasonable. It's around, I think, 2,000 US. If you get bracelet, not bracelet, it depends. But the 1901 is like nine grand. Um, that's nine grand, nine Swiss francs. <laughs> so it's a lot of money, definitely out of my budget. Uh, but you know, you'll never, you never know what the future holds. So if I can get my hand on one of those one day, I would definitely like to. Thank you guys so much for watching. I promise you we're gonna have more uh, videos like this one, not like this one. Just a lot more content coming out in the future. Me and Mike, you're really excited about it. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon.